What's up guys, my name is Barry Michael Doyle and welcome to part 5 of our building a YouTube search application with React Native. Now in the last video we got our API key from, well, from the Google Developer Console, which is awesome. So here's our API key that we got and now we're going to be able to actually go use it. So what I'd like you to do is open your console, now ignore the bunch of stuff I've done there. You need to navigate to where your project directory is. Mine was in documents slash YouTube slash simple YouTube. You just do that by CD documents slash YouTube, etc. but I'm already there. So what you're going to need for this is we're going to have to npm install dash dash save YouTube. Wait, I don't even remember what it's called anymore. Let me just check it out. It's called YouTube API search. So dash API dash search. Now, Cool thing is I've actually already installed it over here, so we don't have to watch me wait to install it now. But yours shouldn't take too long. Just make sure you've had that open as an administrator because sometimes you'll have some issues if you don't. So what we're going to do now is we're going to import YT search from this new package that we installed, YouTube API search. And uh, ESLint will let you know if it can't find the package that will be if you didn't install it properly or it's still busy installing, etc. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build a function that will actually search YouTube. It will use this little thing that we've got here to go search YouTube for videos. So I'm going to create one. You can name this anything we want, but I'm going to say search YT, which is standing for search YouTube. And it's going to accept a term and then it's going to do the following. So we want to say YT search which is referring to this over here. This is just a function from the YouTube API search. And this will accept an object and it will have a callback, uh, which also returns videos. So that's what happens in here. So after the search happens, it will return videos and then you can run a function in here. So what I want to do is console log the videos that come through. But now we also have to think about how we're going to actually do the search. So this object takes two parameters. It will take the key, which is referring to our API key, which we got on the last video over here. So this goes in there, but we've just kept it in a variable to make things easier for ourselves. And it will accept a term. And we want our term to be term, so we can simplify things by just fixing the problem by making a term. So that's just some shorthand ES6 stuff for us there. Now, what this does is it it takes your API key just to make sure that you're actually registered to search for things on there and takes your term and it will return to you five videos in an array as objects because it's an ob the video object contains a whole bunch of information about the video. And those five objects are stored in an array which we are calling videos. So the final thing we need to do now is actually call this function when something happens. So we're going to call this when the on press search button, well, when the search bar button is pressed. So remember in our search bar, we had on press, we wanted to do this.props.onpress.state.term. So we send the term of this current state through to the props, which is on press.search, which goes all the way up to here on press search equals this dot on press search, which is this function up here. And you see it's quite a long trip, but later on in another series, we might tackle uh, Redux, which will make this a lot easier. But that's out of the scope of this series. So what we want to do now is we want to say YT search. We actually want to say, no, we don't want to say YT search. We've already done that. We're going to say this dot search YT, which is we want this to be called. And we're going to use the parameter of term for that. So now we can go to our application in Expo and just see, sorry, I've actually done some testing in the background already, but what I need to do now is actually refresh my application to make sure things are going. So this has left me with some issues that I'm going to solve now and I will be right back. Great, so in a perfect world, we got our application up and running again as usual. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to search Daniel Peacock because let's show his channel some love once more. 
And notice, before I click search, what we expect to happen now is it's going to search and this is going to send this term that we have here out to YouTube and YouTube's going to be like, yo, here's five search results around your term that you've put in. And that obviously doesn't happen instantaneously. So pay attention. We're expecting our array to be printed out here in the console. So this will happen, but it won't happen as soon as you press search. Notice the short time gap. Click. And there we go. It took about a second. So this returns our array of objects. There's our first object and second object, third object, fourth object, and fifth object. And that's all it returns. It returns five. That's just what this package does. You can try to do your own API work, but I just got this one for simplicity. Now let's open this again. What we get now is each of these objects have the same structure. So each object has an e tag property, which is just a unique way of identifying what this is. And they have an ID property, which also is a unique way. The video ID is unique. Kind is YouTube video. It could also be a channel or something. And then the kind of search results here as well in the object is it's a search result. They're all going to be search results because that's what we're using in our API. And then we also get a snippet, which contains the information about the video. So it will contain the channel ID. So this is Daniel's channel ID. Check it out. Uh, it's his channel title. His channel title is Daniel Peacock. So that's it. And classic Dan going to the pier because it was a nice day. That's life in Florida for you. So it's a description and they cut it off after a while. Now you can also see his videos published at that time. And here's the links to the thumbnails that he has as well. So those will just show you the pictures of the YouTube videos, which is obviously useful in showing what the search results are. And then also finally the title, because that's quite useful. So this is episode four of his vlogging, which you can see there. And then there's more videos from Dan basically, because they're all from Dan. They're all his channel and they all match the search result pretty well. So what I want to do next is go back to our code and solve this loading issue because I want to send some sort of feedback here. I think when I click the search thing, the search button, I want it to say loading. And then as soon as the results are there, I want to say, put it back to search again. So we can do that as follows. We go back to our code and in our app component, we're going to set the state object to have a key of loading. And by default, it's going to be false. Now, you may have seen in other React tutorials that you can do the whole massive constructor, I'm pronouncing constructor prop, like weirdly now, constructor and then super and props, and then this.state equals, and then you'd say loading, but literally just saying state here, it means the exact same thing. So. I obviously find this much cleaner and easier, so let's just use that. So what we want to do now is when the button's clicked, so when we actually run the search, I want to set the state to have its loading key set to true. And then when the search is done, when videos are returned, I want to set the state to loading false. So it goes back to false. Now this doesn't actually do anything in our application because this just says, okay, it's not loading and then it is loading. And then when it's done loading, it's not loading anymore. Now we want stuff to actually happen in our search bar. So we're going to extend this component a bit with its properties and we're going to add the loading property to it. Now we can call this anything like literally we can call this anything but I'm going to call it loading because we're referring to loading the loading state of this. And we want loading to be equal to this dot state dot loading. So whenever the state here is changed, this will re-render because the loading state is being used. So the search bar will re-render and down here in our search bar, we can see our title here. So I want to change the text here based on what the property the prop uh, going to app a wrong page. Sorry about that. So I want to change this title based on what this loading property is. So if it's true, I want it to say loading. And if it's false, I want it to say search. So in order to do that, we're going to, well, I'm going to save this along. I want to say this dot props dot loading. 
which obviously this prop, prop start loading refers to this over here, the value of this. And we're gonna say, if it's true, we wanna say loading, let's put some ellipses in there, else we say search. Now this should look familiar to you if you are familiar with JavaScript templating, I ah, can't even speak properly, JavaScript templating languages. So it basically means if this statement over here is true, re return this, otherwise return this or do something, etc. And obviously this dot props dot loading, it actually means this equals true, but you can just omit that and it will work perfectly fine. So now I want to go back into my expo application and let's just see, did this actually reload? It did reload right now, so this should actually work. So I'm done giving Daniel some love. He's had his time in the spotlight. Let me give myself some stuff. So remember what we expect to happen now is we're gonna click this, it's gonna load, and then as soon as the videos come in, it's gonna go back to search. So pay careful attention to how I'm actually gonna bring this closely to you, how this and this sync in with each other. So I click, it's loading, and the video is found and it goes back to search. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. And there we can see my little previous videos, which is my channel and stuff, which is really cool. Anyway, here we are back at our code and you see it wasn't that complicated. We didn't have to do much changes to search bar and we can go back to app and our app doesn't look too bad either. I think one final thing I want to do is instead of logging the videos, I want to keep them in the application state as well. So we can get rid of this log here because now we know it works. And let's expand this a little bit. I want to set videos to equal the videos that are returned over there. But obviously, thanks to ESLint, they're like, hey, you know what? This is actually much cleaner just writing it like that. So we are going to write that. We're setting the state loading to false when the videos have been found, and we're setting the videos state, which is an array, to be an array of videos, which will contain file objects. So let me save that. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe and tell your friends. And as usual, I really appreciate the comments. If you leave comments, I will try to get to them unless I become YouTube famous and that won't happen. But yes, guys, comments are really helpful. Criticism, great. I appreciate it. I will try my best to do better every single time I make these videos. Anyway, guys, keep well and I will see you next time. Ciao.